Hello and welcome to Wisdom Trek. This is Guthrie Chamberlain and I'm your guide to wisdom and creating a living legacy. Thank you for joining us for our seven day a week, seven minutes of wisdom podcast. This is day 121 of our trek and yesterday we continued with our beginning of our commentary on the book of Proverbs and we discovered why Proverbs is important in our pursuit of wisdom. As mentioned yesterday, we won't go straight through the book of Proverbs consecutively, but we will intermix the commentary with other daily wisdom nuggets. We are recording our podcast from our studios at the Big House in Marietta, Ohio today. It's been a busy day full of work activities, and the day just rushed by once again. After some exercising this morning, I did make some additional progress on the woodwork in our formal dining room. I have it mapped out, so I should be able to finish the woodwork and the floors by the end of this week, at least based on my current plans. As we do head out on our proverb trail today, one of the most powerful skills that we can possess while hiking is a skill of observation. If we are going to enjoy and learn from our daily journey in life, it is imperative that we hone the skills of observation so that we do not miss out the critical and enjoyable moments of our life. This is equivalent to using a pair of field glasses or binoculars while you're hiking. It allows you to see the crucial, awe-inspiring, breathtaking moments of life up close and personal. As we look at these verses in Proverbs, through the binoculars of our mind, we will see the treasures of wisdom in detail. So let's not delay any further and start out with chapter 1 of Proverbs. This section is titled, The Purpose of Proverbs, and verse 1 starts like this. These are the Proverbs of Solomon, David's son, king of Israel. Well, by this verse, it's clear who wrote the book of Proverbs. It was Solomon. Solomon wrote both Proverbs, which are wise words, and songs. In all, he collected 3,000 Proverbs along with 1,005 songs. The book of Proverbs contains many of those 3,000 Proverbs. The book teaches us how we should live. It explains the way of wisdom. It warns us about being foolish. So let's move on to verse 2 and 3. Their purpose is to teach people wisdom and discipline, to help them to understand the insights of the wise. Their purpose is to teach people to live disciplined and successful lives, to help them to do what is right, just, and fair. So, by these verses, clearly Proverbs is to teach us wisdom and discipline, and to be disciplined and successful in our lives. A wise person is one who honors God, and God protects him. A foolish person refuses to obey God. There are many dangers for such a person, and the book of Proverbs goes into great details and explains these dangers. Solomon also tells us about four types of persons. Each type of person will benefit from Solomon's wise words, and we'll explore those four types today. The next verse is number four. These Proverbs will give insight to the simple, knowledge and discernment to the young. So the first type of person is the simple person. Now today, if we called somebody simple, we might offend them. That person might think that we're calling them stupid or something, but simple has a different meaning here. In the book of Proverbs, a simple person is someone who is not wise. And by the word simple, Solomon means more than just not being wise. A simple person has not learned how to be wise. So because of this, that person will be in danger. Evil people can easily lead simple people to do evil actions. But if we think about it, not any of us are really good. Everyone does some evil, and everyone fails when we compare it to God's standards. As Romans 3.23 says, For everyone has sinned, we all fall short of God's glorious standard. So in some ways, we're all simple people if we compare it to God's standard. God wants a simple person to learn wisdom, and this is why we want to study Proverbs and why we want to be on our wisdom trek each day. This first begins when we invite God into our lives, and God will help us to become wise. We must grow in wisdom, and we must grow in our knowledge of God. The second type of person is the young person. Now, as we look at the book of Proverbs, it is considered poetry. Some poems or sections are very short, and other poems are very long. The style of these poems may seem unusual to us because they were translated from the Hebrew, and the formatting of their words and and how they were composed were somewhat different. Sometimes, one line has the same meaning as the next, or we could say compare, and sometimes the lines differ from each other or contrast. In other places, the meaning develops from line to line. So as we go through Proverbs, watch out for these different types of poetries or styles. These poems will help us to remember the Proverbs, though. It's a very effective way. And as we should, the Jewish people believe strongly that they should remember the Proverbs or these wise words. Fathers taught their Proverbs to their son. Mothers taught them to their daughters. Grandchildren learned them from their grandparents. And children had to use their memories. The Jewish adults tested their children to make sure they were memorizing. And in this way, children learned to be wise. 
so in the future when problems came, they would know the right thing to do. For this same reason, we should learn the Bible verses today. We should teach them to our children and grandchildren. And in this way, we shall learn true wisdom also. Many things in our world do change, though. There are new inventions, for example, such as the TV or computers. There are new illnesses that seem to crop up, such as AIDS or SARS. And each day we hear of new revolutions and new governments. But one thing that doesn't change is wisdom. The advice that Solomon gave us is still good. He wrote wise words, and they are still wise today. Today's young people will grow old. Wisdom that we teach them now will remain with them throughout their lives. So let's move on now to verses 5 and 6. Let the wise listen to these proverbs and become even wiser. Let those who understand receive guidance. By exploring the meaning of these proverbs and parables, the words of the wise and their riddles. So the third type of person we want to look at today is the wise person. A wise person is somebody who loves wisdom. He loves God's law, and he's always thinking about it, such as mentioned in Psalms 1 verse 2. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. A wise person will always want to learn more. He's never too tired to think about wisdom. But as with any of us, he still makes mistakes, but he's willing to learn. Proverbs 9 8 says, But correct the wise, and they will love you. And we see with a wise person, he wants others to teach him. As in verse 9 says, instruct the wise and they will be even wiser. We can all learn more. We can all grow in knowledge. The Bible teaches us God's wisdom. And the fourth type of person is the intelligent person. And like the wise person, the intelligent person wants to learn. This person will ask for advice. He is trying to understand God's ways. As he studies, he will know more. He will even understand difficult words of wisdom. In verse 7, puts it this way, The fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. As you are learning English, you started with easy words. And as we learn any new subject, we start with easy lessons. The first lesson of wisdom is that we must respect God. He made everything, and He is greater than we are. So we must give honor to Him. The person who knows not God may be clever, they may have many skills, and we can learn many things from this type of person. But such a person lacks something very important. Although they may have learned many lessons, they've missed out on the very first lesson. Wisdom begins when a person respects God. And for us, we should try to show a better way for this person. The opposite of a wise person is a fool. Now, if you call somebody a fool today, it would probably offend them. A fool is a person who intends to do evil. A simple person does evil things because he does not have wisdom. But a fool does evil things because they hate wisdom. We want to show God's way to such people, but sometimes it's difficult when a person hates wisdom or doesn't want to learn. And Jesus put it this way in Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. Don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy. Don't throw your pearls to the pigs. They will trample the pearls, then turn back and attack you. We find that wisdom is very valuable. Sometimes we must leave the fool to their own foolishness. A pig doesn't really appreciate the things that are valuable to us. A fool doesn't appreciate the value of wisdom. But we can learn from the mistake of fools. We must not copy their mistakes. A fool hates wisdom and discipline. But if we are wise, we should love wisdom and discipline. Today we just got started on our trail and discovered the purpose of Proverbs. So join us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. And tomorrow we'll continue with chapter 9 and we'll review verses 19 through the end of the chapter, which is verse 33. And in doing so, we'll look at the Father's exhortation to acquire wisdom, and we will see wisdom as she calls out in the streets for all to come to her. And that'll finish our podcast for today. Remember to listen to your daily dose of wisdom on wisdom-trek.com, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spreaker, or YouTube. Please share Wisdom Trek with your family and friends so they can come along with us each day. And the journal, as always, for today's trek can be found at wisdom-trek.com. I do want to thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, but most importantly, your friend, as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal each day. And as we trek together, let us always live abundantly or fully, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy each day. This is Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey and create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.